Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Underrail. And on this episode, we're going to continue where we left off. Now, on the last episode, we actually cleared out the Burrower's Den. All I did was come back here to town, I healed up, and I checked the shops to see if I could sell any of the stuff that we found, uh, or buy anything new. And really, the only thing I could do was sell some of the stuff we had already gotten a long time ago that we had put in our room. Uh, he wanted four melee weapons, so I sold him some uh, crowbars. I think I had like eight of those left. Uh, and he actually didn't have enough cash on his character to pay me. So what I went ahead and did is uh, got a couple of recipes, things that I don't really need that much. I could have waited, but I went ahead and just sold it to him uh, to get some of the little bit extra cash and some of those recipes. And you can see right here, this is what our inventory looks like right now. Now, I did take off one of my sledgehammers and put that away in the bank, mainly for the reason that it wasn't doing us all that much good. If you look at it, this one does a lot more damage than the one we had, and they weigh quite a bit. They're 23 plus pounds uh, for a sledgehammer. And the majority of the time we're using our power, our, our spells. So the rare occasion that we will actually use this, even if it drains the energy completely, uh, I think we'll be better off. We'll still be able to use the weapon by itself. Plus, we have this hat over here, this helmet, which is a soft padded a steel helmet and it adds 3% energy. I don't know if that means what I think it means that if you have it equipped every turn you get 3% energy back into your weapon. That probably is not the case but if it is that's a pretty cool helmet to have uh, for a weapon like this. But again we're not really using our weapon that much so it's not that big of a deal. I also did switch out my breastplate with one that was pretty close to what it was anyways. The one that I had before did 25 mechanical damage uh, or resist and uh, 23 heat. This one's 23 mechanical and 23 heat, so it's two less on the mechanical. But you're probably asking why would I do that? Well, the last one had constitution increased by one and stealth decreased by 16. This one decreases it by 34, but it also has the immune to burning. And I don't really think we're going to run into that too often here or in the junkyard where we're going to go next. But it's a little bit better. I mean, it's it's too less mechanical, but I get that immune to burning, so I thought that would be kind of cool to check out. Um, as well, on this episode, if you look into your notes, you'll see that we need to go talk to Vera and the administration level to uh, to ask her about the trading documents, or we can just go straight to the junkyard. Now, the trading documents will have us go to the junkyard anyway, so we might as well pick that quest up while we're here. So let's go over there and grab that real quick on the administrative level. Also. I do want to go up and talk to, um, hold on a second, talk to uh, what's his name in the pins because I believe the guy next to him has uh, more psi powers that we can now finally uh, unlock now that we've gotten the level. So I'm definitely interested in seeing, you know, what they have and, and how much that's going to cost. I'm sure it's going to be a pretty penny, but we do have a little bit of extra cash. So here's Vera, Vera Hale right here. We're going to go ahead and see what she has to say. Yes? How can I help you? Uh, what can you tell me about Core City? Now we've already done that. What can you tell me about the United Stations? Uh, we've already done all of that. Are there plans? Yep. Okay, so Tanner mentioned you need some documents delivered to an embassy in Junkyard. That's right. If you're heading that way, you can deliver them for me. Sure. I'm going there right now. Perhaps later. Still got more work to do around here. Uh, we're going there right now. Great. Here are the documents. I'll let them know that you're coming. Have a safe journey and send my regards to the ambassador. Okay, well, she's, she's actually one of the nicest people we've run into so far. So we're gonna go back. Now, the thing to remember when going to the junkyard is there's an easy path, and then there's a little bit more difficult path. Now, the difficult path, you're gonna get more experience, and you're gonna get probably better loot from it. Let's go, is it engineering in Cyber Labs? It may be engineering, we'll go up to the pens first. I think it's this one, but I may be wrong where that guy is stationed. <laughs> it's a long zone in right. Yeah, I think it's this guy right here. This guy over here that's been dissecting this animal for the last, like, uh, 12 years. I don't know what he's doing to that thing, but he's definitely taking his time. So let's see. Do you have any psi abilities? Yes, he does. So he has cryostasis and uh, pyrokinetics. We can probably do both of these, so we're going to click on them. As the name suggests, and we've already gone through all this, but I'll read it again. Cryostasis allows you to suspend a creature in a block of solid ice for a short while. Be careful though, the ice is solid on the inside. It's very vulnerable on the outside. So tampering with it may cause it to shatter and release the creature prematurely. 
It will cost you 150 credits to learn this. That's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it would be up to like a thousand by now. So agreed, here you go. Shall we begin? Sure. And I still believe that this should cut to like a, a tutorial level where you get to try your power out like it did the very first time you came in here. So now we got that power. We're going to go back in and get the other power as well. Let's go to the Psi abilities. Tell me about Pyrokinetic Stream. I think this is the flamethrower one that I really, really wanted for the burrowers, but I didn't get it in time. It basically works like a flamethrower. You project a stream of fire burning everything in a straight line, and it lasts as long as you can maintain your focus. It will cost you 200 credits to learn this. Agreed. Here you go. Let's begin your lesson then. I'm really looking forward to trying this one. It's probably not going to come in too handy where I'm going, but I think we're going to try it out regardless. So, now we have two extra ones. We have this one right here, Pyrokinetic Stream, and, uh, and Cryostasis. So let's see, where do we want to put these? We want to drag this down here. We don't really need this heavy punch anymore. And we're not going to use Stealth because our Stealth completely totally sucks, but let's just put it on the regular attack because we don't really need that either. So we have all of our stuff. We're, we're getting really cool looking, guys. This is, this is actually really exciting. Okay, so now that we got that and we've gotten our orders, the only thing left to do is go to the junkyard. So that's what we're going to do. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with how to get there, you want to go to the level 9 cave tunnel exit in docks. And I'll show you the two different routes you can take. I'm not going to take the boat, but I'll show you how to get there. And it's right here. You normally come out this way over here where the entrance is. You'll talk to the guy and he opens it up for you. If you come over here, though, there's a boatman. And he wants, I forgot what it was, it's like 13 or 14... Uh, uh, SGS credits or something like that's not really that much, but it does cost you a little bit. So if you're going back and forth quite a bit, uh, it may add up quite a bit, so just keep that in mind. Now if you come down here, you'll see it right... Sorry guys, you'll see the captain right here. I need to get to the junkyard. Hmm, alright, I'll take you there for 8 Sharons or 25 credits if you got those. So if you have the Sharons, you can give them them or you can use the SGS credits. Uh, oops, I think I left my wallet in my other armor suit. Hmm, hmm, yeah. <laughs> Even he doesn't believe that, but... Yeah, the, the Charons actually are worth quite a bit more. I wouldn't spin those if, if you didn't have to. It's the, the currency, basically, you're going to find in the junkyard. Almost every town that you go to seems to have not only its own currency, but it, it does use the other one. So there's a place there that you can exchange. Uh, open the gates, please. I'm off to the caves. I wonder how many times he hears that on, on a given day, uh, if anybody else leaves town other than me. But yeah, there, there's an exchange rate, but it's so horrible that I would never suggest using that. Uh, at least I've never found a reason to do that. Uh, but I guess you could always try it if you want to. If you're really, really short, like, you know, by a few coins and you can't really find anything to sell, you don't want to sit around waiting, you know, that's always an option you can do. But me personally, I would not. Uh, it just doesn't seem very efficient. And it's definitely one of those things where if you waste a lot of your coins doing the exchange, I don't know if this game has a limited supply of it. I know the merchants seem to have a, a limit supply. If, if, the, if you go in there and you sell a bunch of stuff to them, they run out of coins. And it's not, at least for me, it's not until you go back and buy something that, that they actually get more, more money. So I don't know if every once in a while they just slowly build up a little bit more, a little bit more, and it just takes an extreme amount of time. But if that's the case, you can kind of see how using the boat or during the, the exchange and taking money out of the game would slowly make it where nobody in the game had any money. Not the merchants, not you. So I don't know. Like I said, maybe they fixed that. Maybe they intended that to be the case. And they wanted you to be very, uh, you know, penny pincher and, and really make your money last and go wise, you know, do something wise with it. Because if you sell it to another merchant, if you buy something from another merchant and give them cash, well, then in the future you can come back. Oh, look at that. These guys have repops. So let's see. Which one do we... Well, I guess we can't do this one. We could do the block of ice. It uses 50 PSI. That's a lot. Considering uh, we only have 100. So that's going to use half of our power. Uh, but I kind of want to try it out. I guess let's let's try it. I want to see how close you have to get to cast it. Because the electrical one that arcs, you can probably cast it from where we're at. Uh, oh. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh wow, look at that. You can cast from way over here. That's pretty nice. So we are going to go ahead and use... Which one? I guess we're going to use our fire. 
I'm kind of wasting power here, but I want to because he's he's a single. So after the fight's over, I can let my power recharge. It takes like 10, 15 seconds. And, uh, but this one's going to set him on fire. With any luck. Yes, it did. Wow. Okay, so I can end my turn. That's all my power. I'm at zero power right now. Holy crap. And now he's running. He's he's afraid. He, he does, He's going to die slowly from the flames. Uh, I don't even have to follow him. I'm just going to end my turn and keep doing that. And I gain experience. There we go. So I end my turn again. Uh, again? Okay, so I guess I got full power. And the combat's not over yet. So I'll keep ending my turn. I know there's probably another one up here. And maybe that guy saw uh, you know, his friend die. And he's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to let you get away with that. So he's going to attack me here. Uh, and maybe that's why I'm still in combat. Uh, let's see, where is he at? There he is. So I should have used it on him from further away. I didn't even see him. I thought that was his dead friend. Uh, so let's see. We can do... Let's do fire, because I like the way that looks. I want to try some of these new spells out. Holy crap. Negative 60 on burning. And like I said before, I think the, the main thing on these guys that really kind of... I wonder what happens when you put ice on them. Does it put it out? Oh, it does put it out. Holy crap. That's not what I wanted. Okay, well, he's frozen at least. And I can wait. Let's see how many turns did he stay in there. So two turns, or one and a half, basically. Let's uh, let's do electrical. Actually, let's do our neural overload. Because it uses less power, and it's a little bit stronger. I think it's going to kill him. And if these guys were closer, I'd definitely be using my, my flamethrower, because I want to try that out. Okay, let's go over here and loot his remains. And he had uh, a Psy Beetle Caprice, and it definitely weighs quite a bit. It's seven and a half pounds. But you'll be able to use it to make armor later on, from what I've been told. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Now, if you had anything in here that you weren't able to open up, your lockpicking skill was too low, you could come back into this room. Um, and in fact, I think there was something in here, wasn't there? I think there was a box really, really deep in here. So we'll go in here and we'll check really quick. It shouldn't take too long. And none of the creatures should have respawned. So let's look around. Is there a box? No? box is empty. Maybe I came back already. What about over here? Locker empty. Oh, the locker. Okay. So there is a locker that we didn't open. And it's a good idea to come back into these places and check them out every so often. I think they do that on purpose to get you to come back. Because they know that you're going to forget. And this one, I think, was way too high. Like, we've been putting our points into lockpicking from the very beginning. And we weren't able to, uh, to open this up. So that just goes to show that this one wasn't meant to be opened up while you were here. Let's see, do we have the skill? Yes, we do. So what did we get? We got 15 rounds of 7.62 millimeter standard rounds. We got a 7.62 millimeter hawker that does 10 to 24 mechanical damage. Uh, we got an ampule, and we got four capsules. A sterile hard shell capsule. Uh, it doesn't say what it's used for or what kind of skill you need. It says it's a component, though. So we'll just trust that eventually somewhere down the road that we'll probably use that. And since it doesn't weigh that much, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Now these exploding barrels, remember if you catch somebody on fire, I'm pretty sure if they stand right next to it, they might be able to explode that barrel. So if you're going to use that spell, make sure you're not close to one of those. Uh, <laughs> if there's creatures nearby, you know, that's fine for them to run into it, but you don't really want to. So now if you come over here, you see this little grate right here that you can open up. There's actually a sign over here. You can look at the sign that says north to the junkyard. And you can click on the other sign that says uh, South uh, Gate Station is East. So you can just open up this little gate and come through. Now remember, if you're a stealth ability, you want to make sure you uh, put that on before you go through. This next little area, the first time I came through, was really hard. There's like four side beetles. And as you remember, the more of them they are, the stronger they get, the more uh, potent their spells are. So yeah, you definitely want to prepare for that. And there's actually a secret path out here into the water if you have the the skill to uh, the, the perception to actually see it. Now I don't on this one because I have no perception uh, but it's there so if you have that or if you have any items you can throw on make sure you do that. Okay so we are going to let's do the electronic right here. Ah he got me. He got me before I could get him. A little too slow on that one. Let's see we are going to go with Let's go with fire, because I like that one a lot. He uses a lot of power, but it lights him on fire, and then I don't have to do anything. He runs around like his, like a chicken with his head cut off. 
and I'm free to just sit there and get more power. Plus, I think he can light more people on fire as well. Oh, I don't want him getting right next to me. I don't want him lighting me on fire. Let's let's kill this guy off. There we go. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, so we're going to use this on this guy because it has a chance to stun him. And that's what we kind of want. We want to stun him. And he's stunned. The thing with this guy is, remember, from what I've seen, you can only stun them once. Whether it's with this or with your uh, telekinetic punch, which does quite a bit of damage. It seems like you have to wait at least one or two turns before you can stun them again, even if you use that spell. So, like, I'll show you with this one. This one almost 100% chance stuns them. I'll have to get closer, uh, which I guess is okay. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It's going to use a little bit of my my movement points. See, and it says he's immune. And that's kind of what happens when you, uh, when you have just stunned him a minute ago. And he's going to wake up. There he goes. He's hitting me a little bit. Not too much. It's actually not that bad. Flamethrower. I, I really, really want to use this flamethrower, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and try it. Holy crap! Holy crap! <laughs> oh my god! That was amazing! He shot it from so far away. I wonder if it uses more power the further away it is. That is amazing! And there's nothing left of his corpse. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna love that one. I didn't know you could do it from so far away. And again, if you had the perception check, in fact, I think I may have some kind of helmet I can wear. It's not these goggles. Do I have another pair of goggles? Yeah, there we go. If I put these on and walk around, will I see it? Probably not, because my perception is going to be like one. Yeah, it's not working. So I need to get a couple more pieces of armor for something like that to work. Let's come up here. I believe there's a couple more up here. I think there's a an alpha rat hound up here as well with a whole pack of, of rat hounds with them. Yeah, there, there they come. Here comes another one. Uh, these, yeah, there's the alpha right there. So he's definitely the first one you should kill. If you have to pick between uh, one or two, I would definitely uh, choose the, rat, the alpha. Now the thing I have a problem with on these spells is they always hit. It says like a 64% chance, but I've never seen them fail. And I think that kind of gives uh, the players an unfair advantage because with weapons, they fail all the time. And that's one of the biggest, you know, drawbacks to that is that they fail so much. This, these, this magic, it's almost a sure thing. Let me see if I can get this guy. Doesn't seem to want to let me highlight him. There he is. Let's see if I can stun him. And he's stunned. Okay, so now all I have is these little tiny red hounds. Actually, one of them's dead already. And this guy, he's not on fire. I wonder why I didn't set him on fire. Maybe I put it out when I stunned him? I don't know. I have to pay attention to that next time. But we are going to go with uh, the electrical one because that's going to arc and maybe hit the other guy. Even though he's feared. Nope, it didn't arc and hit this guy. But he's completely and totally scared of me now because I just wiped the floor with his, his friends in such an easy manner. Oh, and this guy's scared of me too. Wow, I am just too big for them. <laughs> okay. So let's... We're going to end our turn and wait for them to come back to us. Because it's gonna, yeah, see, if I had moved up, they would have got a hit on me, and I, I don't want that to happen. So, let's see, should we use the fire? I'm gonna say yes because I love it so much. Where's he at? Why well, won't I target him? Oh, so it doesn't actually pop up with the percentage, it just says it's gonna hit him, period. So, let's kill this guy. Die! Holy crap! <laughs> it just keeps going until he's dead. That whole. Man, if you use that on one single guy when when you just first show up and, and see him that's gonna kill him. in fact let me let me do that here hopefully it doesn't catch me on fire although I can't get caught on fire because I have immunity to fire so that that works perfect I'm using fire spells and there's no chance of them ever catching me on fire I like that I like that a lot I didn't think I didn't think of uh, doing that with my spells but it's definitely uh, something that's gonna come in handy right there so let's go ahead and pick up these remains now what do we get right here? Fancy rat hound ears. Now we've already studied this item three times, so we can't really do anything with that. Adrenal glands, these are okay. They don't weigh too much, only about uh, half a pound. Now these things weigh five pounds a piece, so th those add up. And it's a quality of 28. But I only need to require crafting skill of 22. I wonder why. Usually if it's a quality of 28, you need 28 crafting skill to upgrade that. Maybe I have something special that lowers that, that requirement. So let's end our turn, which should end combat. Yep. And our power should start going back up. 
So we got some more adrenal glands, biology 40, and we got some healthy animal hearts. Now I actually haven't been checking these to see if the level or the numbers stay the same. This is biology 25 and this is biology 40. I wonder if all adrenal glands are 40 and all healthy animal hearts are, are 25 because the the rat hound leather is different. You know, each one has its own uh, quality on it. So it'd be interesting to keep an eye on that and see if see if that's the case. Now, if you're going to go to the junkyard, it's going to be this direction right over here. This is where you want to go into this tunnel. Up here, there's actually some bandits that I couldn't kill the first time around. I kind of want to try it out. I want to see where this goes. I want to come up here and see if we can kill these guys. These guys are immediately hostile. There's no negotiating. There's no talking. There's no doing anything. They're just hostile. So we're coming up here and we're going to see just how well we can kill them. Because one, I kind of want to see what they have, their loot, you know? And I want to see the area because the first time they wiped the floor with me and I kind of want to pay them back. So let's, let's come up here. Now we're going to be a little careful. We're not going to go, you know, barging in because we do want to get the first hit on these guys. Now remember, we're probably not going to use our fire spells right off the bat because they use so much power. And because of that, if we're fighting like five or six guys, we need to be a little bit more more cautious with the spells that we use. So you can see these guys are already hostile. We're already in the attack mode. If it was a normal guy, you could click on him and, and talk to him or do something along those lines. You can't even do that with these guys. So let's come up here. Oh, I moved up one space and it entered combat for me. So I didn't get the first hit. Usually, if I had used my, my electrokinesis... Oh, he stunned me. Oh, suck. Cannot move. That sucks. These guys are going to get right on top of me. I don't know if we're going to survive this, but we'll see. Second wind. We may have to run if, if this gets sticky. No, he couldn't even hit me. Oh, he got me in my knee. Dang it. Let's see, what does that do? The character... Wait, 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 hold on. I want to see what they're doing to me. No, he missed me. Oh, no, he got me. Dang it. Okay, this character suffers five bleeding damage every turn and gains no movement points, so I can't run, even if I wanted to. Second win, a short-term short immunity to stun effects. So this is what they get. They get that second win, and they're immune to stun effects for two turns. That's why it's not working on them. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to kill this guy off with my fire before he gets his first attack. Because usually if they run up on you, <laughs> wow, they are melee guys. And you don't want melee guys right on top of you. Now, I am out of power. No, I'm not out of power, but I'm out of turns, out of my, uh, my AP. So I have to end my turn. And he's afraid, so he's running away, and he's just going to take damage and die in some little tiny corner where the fire will run out, and he'll come back. Dang it. What's he hitting me with? It's some kind of poison. Oh, it's 18 acid damage, plus 30 mechanical. That guy's pretty harsh. I am going to end that, and we are going to put you all on fire. Take it, punks. Oh, yeah. They didn't catch on fire, though. Dang, that didn't really do all that much damage. Not as much as I would have hoped. Okay, so we are going to put a force field here just to give ourselves a little bit of space. Now, they're going to have to go around that uh, off to the side, and thankfully, that's going to cause them turns. And I don't think they're going to be able to hit me for this next turn. Yeah, so he can't hit me. And they're going to get a lot closer. Okay, that's fine with me. Let's see. I am going to use a Hell Hypo, just in case. And I probably could use a, a Psy Booster, but I'm not going to. I am just going to use uh, my Electrical. Let's see if I can stun him. Nice. And it actually goes through the Force Field. If I was using anything else, I'd probably have to move over to the side. So he's stunned. This guy's not. And this guy won't actually be able to get around to... Oh, no, he can't. I was going to say, he wouldn't be able to get around to me because, uh, you know, the force field's in the way. But this guy is now back, and if he has a health hypo, he's going to use it. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to hit him first. Hopefully he'll bounce off and kill one of these other guys. No. See, that's why I used it on him, because if I had used it on this guy, it may have not have bounced up, and that would have sucked for him to, to heal up completely. So this guy's almost dead. Let's see if we can kill him off. Nope, not going to kill him off. Going to go ahead and end our turn. Ah, he healed himself up. That sucks. We're going to put these guys on fire on the next turn, though. And I think because they're closer, we're going to have a better chance. Now, we are taking more damage, unfortunately. So let's see. Do we want this guy? It doesn't even show you what the health is of these guys. Uh, I think I'm going to go after this guy because he hits a lot harder. Duh! No, I missed! Holy crap, I didn't know you could miss with that. Okay, let's, let's back up a little bit because they're hitting us a little too hard up there. Knee shot. Ah, oh, they got us again. We're going to have to heal up. 
we're gonna take these punks out. I'm gonna use a health hypo. Oh man, he's doing a lot of damage to me. Let's use another health hypo. Can we use it yet? Yes, we can. 160. I guess that's okay. Let's let's hit this guy. We'll stun him. Yes, he's stunned. This guy's taking a lot of damage. This guy's almost dead. And let's back up a little bit more. I kind of wonder if they do more damage to us when we're facing away than if we're looking directly at them. I don't know for sure, but it does kind of seem like that's the case. So let's go ahead and see if we can stun this guy. This guy's immune to it right now for two turns. This guy shouldn't be. Let's see. Come on. Stun him. Yes, he's stunned. And he got some critical hits. Perfect. And this guy's almost dead. In fact, I might be able to kill him with this right here. The Neuro Overload. Die. Uh, yes, you are dead, punk. And I hope I get some health hypos out of this because we went through quite a few. So let's see. I, this doesn't really do as much damage as this one. And this one uses far less uh, Psy points. So I think we're going to do that since we're just down to one guy. I think we're going to go with damage-wise. Because he can't get stunned, so there's really no reason to use that arc one. Uh, that one's perfect for multiple enemies and, and stunning and all that other stuff, but when it comes down to, like, one guy, not exactly the spell I would use. Okay, so let's close that down. I don't know why I had that open the whole time, just because we needed uh, to see our health. There we go, so there's no more guys, at least within the vicinity. There might be more guys further in, so I will wait for my power to go back up. Uh, shock, steel, combat, knife. Nice! Uh, 8 to 13 mechanical, impact speed very low, base action points 12 AP, range melee, critical chance 10%, critical damage bonus 115%, bypasses 60% of target's energy shield, damage increased by 2% for every point strength above 5, that would be amazing for us, on hit inflicts 6 to 11 electrical to the primary target, and six or 3 to 6 electrical to all nearby enemies cost for energy okay so the more in more enemies it hits the more energy it costs it incurs 125 percent of mechanical damage resistance and threshold and it's full up it has a 34 out of 34 energy because he never got to use it on me cannot be disassembled though that's kind of cool though whoa look at this this is nice scoped tornado crossbow this is a tornado model crossbow its aiming precision is increased by the mounted scope Damage 23 to 36 mechanical. That's amazing. That's a lot of that's a lot of damage. Impact speed is low. Base action points are 25 AP. Range is 12. Optimal is 8. Precision plus 7%. That's nice. Close quarter precision negative 10%. And move and shoot precision negative 15%. That's common for most crossbows. Critical chance 9%. Critical damage 100. And it incurs 125% of mechanical damage resistance and threshold. And that one, it's pretty nice. It, it, the durability is not as high as it could be. It's only 278 out of 690, but that's still pretty good. Rathound leather armor, 20 mechanical, 8 uh, cold. Yeah, persuasion by 3. Got some bolts and we got some coins, so we'll take all of that. Let's come up here and grab this guy. Uh, he has some bandages, which I guess we could use to heal up, but we don't really need to. Got some uh, coins and we got some health hypo. We've got one health hypo that does help to pay back the loss. Oh, there was another one down here I forgot. Hiding in the wall. I'm glad we didn't miss this guy. So we got a steel combat knife, melee weapon, 8 to 14 mechanical. Yeah, it's nothing special there. Uh, increase 2 points and straight. Yeah, it's the same thing. 5mm hawker LS. Damage 10 to 17. Uh, it's the same thing. Yeah, it was nothing new on that one either. That's pretty much what we've been finding. Uh, pig leather armor. This armor is made of durable pig leather. Mechanical 22% constitution increased by one. I'm finding a lot more armor that gives you constitution. Kind of makes sense, you know, armor, health, you know, goes together, but uh, it's definitely, since the last patch, a lot more special stats on the armor than there ever was before. We got three 5mm casings, we got uh, 20 5mm standard rounds, and we got some uh, cow traps, which you can put on the ground to hurt the, the enemies if they walk over them. So let's go around, look around up here, see if we can find anything. Oh, there's a shelf. We can look in the shelf. There's also a bed. I kind of wish you could use their beds to, to sleep in and maybe get attacked or jumped by those things. Rubber sole, it's a component. Rubber shoe soles, you'll need two of these when crafting any kind of footwear. Required crafting skill tailoring is 10. Uh, mark card debt, oddity. It takes quite a bit of observation, but you figure out these cards can actually 
uh, are actually marked. Pick up and study this item to gain 100 points of experience. You can study this type of item up to three times, and uh, we haven't studied it at all, so this will be the very first time. I kind of like that one. That one makes sense. It, it says, you know, through studying the item, you learn that they are marked. That would, you know, that makes sense that it's giving you experience because you're learning, you know, as you use the item. So some of these other ones, you know, where you just read a little piece of paper and you gain experience, doesn't really make that much sense. The propaganda one does because it kind of expands your mind to, you know, what the propaganda was of that day or what it was uh, at the time that was written. Uh, I don't know where these things lead. We're just looking around right now. We will go back down to the junk here. Don't, don't, uh, don't fret about that. We're not going to go off on some weird uh, exploration right now. We will eventually. I do want to just go off and check out tunnels that they don't send us down on a normal basis, but we're going to come back this way. This is the way we entered. We could probably come down this way and just enter the junkyard. Uh, I don't know for sure. That's why I'm not going to go down that route. I know this one will lead us where we want to go. So That was pretty fun. I like killing those guys. Those guys definitely deserved what they got. <laughs> a bunch of little punks. So let's come over here. Uh, let's see, do, how many health hypos do I have? I just have one health hypo. But I have quite a few bandages. So I think I'll use that. I think I'll use a bandage real quick. Let me do that. It's a little bit of a waste, actually, but because in here I know there's a chance we could get attacked, <laughs> and I'm trying not to ruin too much for you, but I want to make sure you're prepared, because if you're going through what I'm going through, uh, I, I don't want you just to to jump into it and be like, oh, you know, why didn't he tell me that that was going to happen, so... If I know something bad's about to happen, I'll go ahead and give you guys some hints. But it's it's not going to happen for a while, so I don't think we're going to be in too big of a rush. So let's check this guy out. Sorry, Jack. There's no room if you come to fish. Uh, what is this place? Haven't been here before, eh? It's called Junkyard, and it's not your typical station state either. There aren't any laws, or any written laws, or anything like that. So tread carefully, and try not to step on any toes. Especially those of black eels or scrappers. They are the two biggest gangs, and between them, they control most of the junkyard. Uh, what are you fishing for? Eels, of course. They are very delicious, and if I catch more than I need, I can always sell the rest to the tavern. They sell eel sandwiches there. Okay, so I'll be going now because you don't have anything else in your conversation. So it says junkyard, so I'll let you know that you're here, you're in the right place. This is a scrapper thug. Uh, what do you want? What is this place? What? You lost or something? It's the junkyard. Okay, what can you tell me about the junkyard? Can I just go on in? Uh, are you part of some organization? So what can you tell me about the junkyard? A lot, but I'm not going to. So get lost. Okay, you're really nice, punk. Uh, what about this? Uh, what can you tell me? What is this place? Can I just go in? Are you part of some organization? Yeah, I'm a scrapper. We run the depot. So if you're looking for some stuff, go check out the store there. Well, you're just... You're just full of information now, aren't you? Uh, I guess I just have to ask you the right question. Can I just go on in? I'm not going to stop you. Well, why not? If you figured if somebody asked you a question like that and you were evil, you'd take advantage of it and be like, yeah, for the right price. You know, and you'd be like, you weren't even charging before, but because he's an idiot and he asked, you know, you're going to charge him. I'm surprised he didn't take advantage of that. Uh, you have to give scrappers every other fish if you catch uh, any here. So, see, he is exploiting these people. It would seem like he would, you know, exploit you too. Although, if I was catching fish here, I would not give this guy anything. He would have to fight me for it. And the way we're going right now, he would lose big time. I'd set him on fire and watch him run around. <laughs> I'd rather lose a finger to an eel than a leg to the rat hound. Mm, well, I guess if those are your only choices, and those are pretty horrible choices, uh, then I would vote for neither one of them, actually. <laughs> the scrapper thug. Uh, mind your own business. Okay, I guess I will. I'll mind my own business. We'll come over here into the, the junkyard. Alright guys, so we are in the junkyard now, and unfortunately our time is a little bit long because we did that fight. I do apologize for that, but we're going to go ahead and end the, the video here. If you do enjoy these episodes, please take a moment, hit the like button, subscribe. Definitely helps grow my channel. Also, you're more than welcome to leave comments down below if you got any tips and tricks you want to share. I'll make sure to give you guys credit. And on the next episode, we are going to explore this junkyard. It's a really, really cool place, as I said before, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. But I want to make sure we have plenty of time to explore this without being rushed, and so I think that's why it's best to, uh, to start the video uh, on the next episode right here. Again, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.